Howdy guys, I'm Auto Edit Jason, and in this video, we're gonna be stuffing these 35 inch tires underneath this bone stock 95 Tahoe we've been calling the Tahoe Verlander, and hit the dirt by the end of the day. Let's get going. All right, so here's the basics of what we're gonna be running on the Tahoe Verlander. Uh, we're gonna be running 35 inch Patagonia MTs by Milestar. Uh, when I went to Discount Tire, these were the most cost effective tire <laughs> at just about, just a little over $200 a tire for the 35. That is just the best deal. And as you guys know, I've had great, great success with my 38 Patagonia MTs on my Jeep. So it was a no brainer that I'm gonna be going that way on this. I not only just like the looks of them, they have performed great for me in all terrain that I run. Now remember, I'm a West Coast Jeeper, so I have to drive to any uh, really harsh terrain, so I don't do a lot of that East Coast mud and stuff or whatever, but uh, they do great for what I'm gonna do, all the desert stuff that I do, highway driving. And <laughs> if you notice, white letters out, baby. You know that's how I roll if that's, that's an op option for me. And I think it's actually gonna look pretty good onto this vehicle. Certain vehicles, it actually lends itself towards that. This is a older, kind of a more uh, nostalgic vehicle. It's gonna work great on it. Just, let, we're gonna find out together. Now you guys may notice I'm running the stock 16 inch alloy wheels that actually came on this vehicle. So I'm not changing that up. There's gonna be, I decided after thinking about this for a few weeks and just driving this thing, there's gonna be certain things that I do economically and then there are just certain things I'm not gonna do that. Like I'm, I'm already decided that I'm gonna take the winch. So I have a Xeon 12 S winch that I was gonna run on the truck. That's going on this thing. I went ahead and ordered a buck stop bumper. So there's a bumper coming for this thing, a winch bumper. So basically we're gonna be following the playbook that I did on the Jeep and that's stuff larger than you probably should tires on stock suspension, go drive it and enjoy it do a winch bumper and that's just because I go out a lot and I just I will have that peace of mind of being able to get myself out or you know out of a situation that may happen. So I'd love to get out in the dirt before it gets dark today. It's 2.30 now uh, so we might lose light but we're gonna go for it. Send it. All right, so we're gonna start in the back here since I figured this is gonna be easier than the front so we'll get this handled first. Now 16 by 7 stock wheel with a 12.5 inch wide tire asking a lot of that but can be done here it is i did a similar thing to the jeep uh when i had the stock rubicon wheels on that thing it, it it's going to work fine for what we're going to do we're not, it's not a rock buggy or anything like that so that's what's going on here the offset is going to keep it right square center in the in the wheel well and that's going to be desirable during this part of the process <laughs> when you get aftermarket wheels sometimes the offset moves it out then that's when you're going to start needing to trim things like that now what i did was first off here is what the stock bump stop looked like after 26 years and a bunch of use. It was pretty much wasted. So I went and I ordered the Skyjacker extended bump stop to put in place here. Now I did have to put use a grinder and grind the, the perch of that a little bit to make it fit. No big deal, literally took two seconds um, to get that in there. And then that will give me a little bit of more bump protection because we're gonna be adding a bunch more meat to this thing. So that'll keep the tire from going up in here. It was gonna do that anyway with the stock stuff once I start getting rad. So doing that was a, an easy no-brainer first move. Um, something visually that you can see. And then I came through and you know what let's do? We're gonna go ahead and make the call right now. Let's move these, remove these trim pieces. These don't really get us more clearance, but they're gonna take it from city rig to dirt rig. So we'll take all these off. All right, so we'll get this cleaned off in a second. But now what I did was just right away, I'm just knowing I just wanna get, if I, if I were to have a wheel or a fender lip roller, I would do that right now and just roll this lip all the way. But for the time being, all the lower surfaces that I know are in harm's way, I'm just gonna hit, and this is what, what's called a dead peen or a dead shot hammer. And you can get this at your local hardware store. They're a little pricey. 
This is a snap-on one, so it would cost like the same as what this whole truck costs. Um, but these are nice because I have a little two and a half pound sledge right here. This is for when you need a little bit more persuasion. And then, but the metal here dings up things. So the dead, the plastic on this is something that all I did was I come through and start doing a kind of a gorilla style bead roll on this thing and just bend all of these, all of these lips in a little bit out of the tires way. Now and on the inside here, there is a pinch seam and this is a <laughs> jagged piece of metal where two parts of the sheet metal are joined together. And so what I did was I took the metal, the sledge and was able to get this hammered just at least in this particular area. I'm looking at how much the bump stop is gonna keep this from coming up and just taking the evil off of. So up to about here, I have it to where there's no metal because that is right square in the middle of the tire. So go ahead and did that. So basically that's it for the prep back here. Let's go ahead and bolt the tire on and see what the clearance looks like. Just for giggles, let's dress it up and put this bad boy on. And give us a little spray down there. Don't forget your Lucas Speed Wax. Clean that up. Looking pretty good. So there you go, 35. The Tahoe is at ride height right now, so you can kind of see that we have beautiful clearance here. It is going to be tight inside here. I can fit my fingers in here, but as soon as you get any articulation, we'll probably see a little bit of rubbing in here. Well, let's go find out. Um, and same thing here, but it's right square in the middle of that. Uh, because it's a leaf spring, the, the fixed eyelid is in the front. So as the tire comes up in suspension, it will move forward ever so slightly because there's a shackle on the leaf spring back there. So we'll have that. So that's why it was important for me to clear this area, just in case as the thing comes up, that it's gonna, if it's anything, it's gonna find the front side of this. So boom, there you go. All right, let's get to the front. All right, so in the front, there's a couple little things that I'm gonna do first off. So right away, I'm gonna take out these little filler panels. It just takes these three little quarter inch bolts. There's two in the top here and then one that goes right into the, the splash shield there. So I'm gonna pull those out because I'm gonna wait until I get my fancy buck stop bumper before I do a final trim on those. So for right now, I'm just gonna get those out of the way. And then since this bumper has been dinged right here, I'm pretty certain this is gonna be an issue. So this might be the only thing we have to cut. So let's get going, but that's just kind of a cool little easy tip there. Get that out of the way for now. Plus we'll go ahead and remove the chrome strip since we're gonna, even though I like the grandpa style white letters out, doesn't mean I need all of the fancy chrome trim on my rig. This is all just gonna get brush scratches and stuff anyway. So we'll just get this cleaned off. We wanna get in the dirt today. Here's the only other thing that I've done, and that's replace this bump stop down here. Now I got these off of, I put a link in my Amazon store to these things, just the same with the Skyjacker ones in the rear, but I put stock replacement Dorman uh, style inside there. But <laughs> Let me show you what this looks like. This is what the stock bump stop, there used to be an actual bump stop here, and you could see now what the Dorman product looks like in place there, and that will just help protect from you know the suspension over traveling and, and tucking up all of that fancy new rubber up into the uh, wheel well that we don't want. And then the only other thing I did on this one was I did that same drill where with my dead blow, kind of hammered that in a little bit. Same with back over in here. I went ahead and just got that. And that's it. I think it's time to bolt a tire into this thing. All 
right. Here's a cool little thing. Now I used that super clean stuff inside here and you can see it did a pretty good job, but that was 26 years of just never coming off and just pitted brake dust and stuff. So it did pretty good, I'd say. Okay. So you can see this is the tire at full droop right now. So as it comes up a few inches into the bumper here it is definitely gonna hit. You can actually just see it's just, it's gonna be super close, but there's gonna be no turn. So I'm gonna go ahead, tape it off here and just make a cut since we don't have to save this thing. So we're just gonna go wonk. All right, so now we'll put it on the ground. We'll see what this looks like. I eyeballed the other side and it looks like it might be fine. So we'll put it down on the ground and see before we head out and see if we don't have to do a little trim like this on the other side. Moment of truth. All right, it looks like it's gonna be okay back here. I mean, I honestly don't know until we get it driving. This is right on the ragged edge of what I'm comfortable with. So I, it took all of literally two minutes to cut the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a cut on this side. So let's do that before we drive it. All right, let's do this. She looks good. I can just tell. Feels awesome. We have turning. I didn't hear it rub just now getting out of the street. Huh? Feels pretty good so far. So we're gonna head up to the train tracks up into the riverbed. And we're gonna do, and that's the best kind of off-roading that this is what that, I, that's what I intend to do with this, is that's the Death Valley kind of jam. And that's what this is, in my mind, is, is really just gonna be perfect for, is that long haul camping type stuff where you could throw your stuff in the back, sleep back there, not worry about having a, a rooftop tent. Ooh, oh, hey, sharp turn. Well, there was actually a pretty good little turn. It didn't really, it didn't rub for sure. I do notice that having those bump stops in makes a difference. I could feel them. It was just purpose, porpoising before and it still needs shocks, ball joints. It needs a lot of refreshing. Please help me in the comments. Give me a little bit of, a, of guidance. I need, I wanna do full steering on this. Just freshen it all up, put some heavier duty parts on there. Um, what do we use? What do we got for that? So can it be done fitting 35s on your stock Tahoe? Obviously it can, uh, but it didn't really require that much effort. And I really do love the looks of this thing. And as the practical around town stuff, totally fine, totally fine. Uh, I'm sure that at full lock, it'll rub on the frame rails, but it's not gonna rub on body panels, which is kind of cool. Um, and I was even talking to David uh, Oliver today, and he was saying, giving me a tip on how to weld a little piece of steel in place to set the steering lock a little bit better. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Here we are with 35s. I haven't re-geared yet. I actually ordered gears, so it, this thing's stuck. It's here, it's in the thing. So I called Yukon, where they're gonna do 456 gears, a Grizzly locker. You guys care to see all that stuff? Um, and some upgrades, some axles. We're not gonna, I'm not gonna go corporate 14 bolt. We're gonna keep the 10 bolt back there. I'm gonna learn to drive accordingly, and that's the plan so far. So we're just gonna put it in four low and just let it do its thing. And by the way, the four low just magically started working. I was just down there 
fooling around and uh, adjusting stuff and it just started working. So actually, let's check and see. Yeah, four lows working. So there you go, it's healing itself, meant to be. So this is the type of terrain that I envision me doing the most, and this is what I want this thing to be able to do, is this type of stuff, because this is Death Valley, this is that overlanding type of stuff. Now, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna guess we're gonna need a little bit more work before we could really just articulate it out or hit stuff fast uh, with this setup, but let's just see. Let's get ahead up, up this wash here. This is kind of my test bed I took my Jeep here after the long arms, I took Joe's Jeep here. This is just kind of a fun little spot. You get to check out the graffiti. But right off the bat, now I didn't air down. I'm at 28 right now on all four tires. And the thing feels quite comfortable. <laughs> There's no, I mean, it, it's exactly what you'd think. Let's take this little off camber downhill thing. Cool. Okay, now here's some rocks, so we'll just see what she does. Oh, this just, it's weird. Uh, it, it's, it's a really interesting experience to be in a vehicle, like I have a Jeep that is so capable, that truck is mega capable, but it's fun. There's a difference to having an older vehicle that isn't as capable right out of the box and have it do fun things like this. It's a fun project. And I, I just don't know why. I just emotionally connect with this vehicle. I'm not even a Chevy guy. I'm a car guy, but I've gravitated towards other brands, but here you go. I love this thing. I could do this all day. And that is the point. hit some of these things I really for not airing down and these shocks being just junk this thing is really good really comfortable brain is racing about all the camping trips just for something about being able to be so self-contained in your old rig like this throw in your bag your sleeping bag right down in the back there very appealing right now well I would say this was a, as a starting point this is an insane success holy mackerel all right let's head up this little washy section here. Yeah, let's go this way. Oh, okay, we caught a fender there. We'll have to check that out. Sound like that might have grabbed the tire a little bit. Just feathering the brake and making the tires grab a little bit. Oh, this thing is fun! Holy mackerel! <laughs> oh, geez. It's not supposed to be that much fun right out of the bag. Oh, it's good. All right, this was a resounding success. Can you put 35s on a stock Tahoe? And actually do some wheeling absolutely not that this is like any groundbreaking news but it sure is fun to do it yourself so let me encourage you go buy an $800 vehicle and have some fun with it the 
Let's see if we can get some elevation and end this thing with some beauty shots. So there you have it. Not bad for an afternoon's work. We're already on the trail with this thing and look at it. It looks amazing. It's evoking all the emotional responses that I was hoping for and I didn't even see coming. So thank you guys so much for watching. There's so much more to come. Like I say, we got gearing and lockers for this thing. We got a locker for the truck. We got tires and seat belts for the Mustang. So much going on on the channel. Please subscribe. Make sure you're subscribed, hit the notifications and thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, Enjoy your drive. I got a lot more trail to cover today.